So I'm here today with Simon Stott, who's Director of Research at Cure Parkinson's. Hello, Simon. Um, so we're here to talk about drug repurposing. Um, Simon, can you explain what drug repurposing is and how it benefits the, the drug discovery process? So drug repurposing involves taking a, a molecule or a therapy that's already in clinical use um, for one condition, such as uh, oncology or cancer, and developing it for another condition, such as Parkinson's. And, and how does that improve the, the process of getting a new drug out to patients? Basically speeds up the process. It, involve, it, it allows you to skip over a lot of the drug development process, um, such as the toxicology, because it's already being used in the clinic and it's, we know that it's safe. You can jump over several of these clinical development hurdles and go straight into tests of efficacy, basically. So what you're saying is the safety is already demonstrated in humans, and so you can yeah. cut out lots of that testing. And I guess the approval process, the regulatory approval process, is faster as well. The last part of that is an interesting uh, um, element. We haven't come to that yet with disease-modifying therapies, but um, hopefully the um, regulators are more open to a repurposed molecule being approved for a particular condition based on the fact that it's been... For example, exenatide. It's a diabetes drug that we're repurposing for Parkinson's. And it's been used for a dozen years very, very safely within the diabetes community. And there was preclinical data to suggest that it was um, having neuroprotective effects in models of Parkinson's. And then we've run a series of clinical trials for this drug, um, Exenatide. And the um, early preliminary data suggests it's um, having a very encouraging effect in Parkinson's. And now there's a large phase three trial ongoing at the moment that Cure Parkinson's is supporting. And the, um, the hope is that they will see a positive signal there, that the regulators will say, this is an interesting new therapy for um, people with Parkinson's, we'll, um, we'll approve it for the clinic. And how is Cure Parkinson's directly involved in these, these studies? We're a research charity uh, registered in the UK, but we have clinical trials going on around the world. Um, we have them in America, we have them in Australia, we have them in Europe. We started a program about 11 years ago called the International Link Clinical Trials Initiative, and that was prim primarily um, early on a very a, a drug repurposing focused um, program. That's where drugs like Xenotide were um, brought forward for clinical evaluation. So I guess another advantage of drug repurposing is, is it saves a lot of money as well, it's, as well as the time to get a drug out to, to patients. It's a, a lot cheaper. How much sort of savings can you realise? The beauty of the process is that the drug is already available. There, there are many, many steps early in, early in that process of um, developing a new drug that you can skip over. And time-wise as well, you're talking about years and millions of pounds or dollars worth of um, research. You can jump over all of that and go straight into your cohort of interest. For example, with, for us, it's people with Parkinson's and then start looking for signs of efficacy. So it sounds brilliant. Are there any downsides to drug repurposing? It's not as easy as it sounds. Initially, you start out thinking this is just going to be straightforward. We'll take this drug and we'll put it into the people with Parkinson's. You run into issues with matters like dosing. The dose that's used for diabetes, for example, with exenatide might not be the correct dose for Parkinson's. You might need to use more, you might need to use less. So that has to be established. And then you also might have issues with delivery. For example, we have one clinical trial around a molecule called Ambroxol. It's a cough medication. The dose required was um, significantly higher than what is used in the clinic typically. It required the participants in the first study to take 21 pills a day, which was wow. pretty heroic because they're really foul tasting pills. They're very, very bitter. While they were able to do that for six months and um, were very grateful for their participation in that study and their, and their efforts to maintain that treatment regime. For the next study, we've uh, reformed, we've reformulated it so it's no longer 21 pills a day it's only three pills a day on top of their dopamine based therapies that they currently take do you have some other drugs in the pipeline repurposed drug yes we have we've got currently with we for, through our ilct program the international and clinical trials program we have um, had 20 completed trials and 21 ongoing trials and we have about a dozen um, additional studies lined up to kick off in the next 18 months two years yeah that we've got quite a few um, repurposed drugs coming through um, for um, Parkinson's. It's a very, very exciting time. So it sounds brilliant. So as a person with Parkinson's, if I want to get involved in one of those clinical trials, how do I do that? There are multiple ways. You can speak to your um, clinician, your neurologist, and say that you're interested in clinical trials. And um, if there's anything locally that they have available, they can point towards them. You can come to our website, cureparkinsons.org.uk, and um, we have a list of the trials that we are um, supporting and other trials as well. Parkinson's UK has a very good website. The Michael J. Fox Foundation has a very good website. 
and there's lots of different ways you can get involved. Simon, thank you very much. That was very helpful. You can help us keep making this content by simply subscribing to the channel. And remember, there's a new video every week.